it's the beginning of uh, February and uh, it's too cold out to use the Flexit 17 that I normally rebuild the targets with and I have a new insert and I went to the local hardware and I wanted something dense, dense foam. So this is the only one that says high density and it's good from 30 degrees to 120 degrees, okay, for use. So it's called DAP, let me hold this, it's, every time I do a video it's windy out. It's called DAP Home Seal and it's uh, all season foam, okay. So what I'm going to do is I got a jar of Vaseline and I'm going to wipe it around that insert so that this hopefully when it fills I'll be able to still pull out the insert and change the insert if not no big deal I'm gonna rebuild it when it's warmer anyway the saws all work but I figured I'd give it a shot you know so we'll take it out and show you see we got the insert I'm going to put the Vaseline all around there in the back, and once I get it coated, I'll come back and show you. Okay, it's all coated. Hopefully the camera won't blow down. It blew down twice already. Okay, every time I do a video, it's uh, windy out. So let me put this in. Got this spray foam here. Let's see if you can see. Yep, you can see. Look at all these big spaces we got here, eh? Start in the back. Up here. Okay, I filled in the foam. I stuck the nozzle in as far as I could go. Okay. And uh, I'm gonna let this set up till tomorrow. And then when I come out tomorrow, I'll see the texture of it. And uh, I don't think I need a sawzall. I probably could get away with a bread knife and just trim it around. I'm not sanding it. I'm not getting fancy. I'm not painting it. I'm just going to see how the texture is. I just want to keep the deer target intact until it's warmer weather and I can cut it out and redo it properly. So who knows? This may last, but we'll see. Just wanted to show you different stuff I bought and we'll see how it works. All right. Have a good day. Keep shooting. Okay. Here we are the next day. The expandable foam. Nice and hard. <clears throat> feels dense. It feels good. You know, I didn't expect it to be this good, but... It really is. So what you do is you go in your kitchen and you get your wife's nice bread knife. Okay? And you go over to the target. Wow. I'm liking this. I'm liking it.
Okay. Now that you got the idea, I won't bore you. I'm going to trim it up and then we're going to talk. Okay, it did what I wanted it to do. It's not like the Flex at 17, but if you have a target, you see this is all shot up around here. And what happens is somebody keeps shooting high or keeps shooting low, your target splits apart. So what you do is, this stuff I think is pretty good. Good enough to, you know, keep track of when you, it looks like it's gonna split, stick the nozzle in, fill it up, help keep it all together. And then one day if you wanna rebuild it, then use the sawzall, you can cut it out. You could actually do half at a time if you want, fill it up with, you know, saran wrap. I, I have a couple of videos you could watch. One was a nice bear target, came out good. And uh, this is the bear target I rebuilt over a year ago with flex at 17 all right and look it, it's it's as good as new it's better it's actually better than new i had an argument the guys some of the foam was flaking off and i said it might have been from the mold or whatever they said no it was animal scratches so anyway to make a long story short i posted it yeah people oh these animal scratches is not well guess what i sanded it i redid it i uh, put flex at 17 painted it never had a mark again you know, and on the other side, I had one or two pieces of flaking. So it was flaking. I don't care what anybody says. All right. So let's get back to this target here. And this dap foam that I showed you in the can. Okay. Here's a piece. Now, I haven't done this before, so I don't know what's going to happen. Let's see. Here's a piece I cut off. Here's an arrow. Okay. Let's push it in and pull it out. Okay, it did self-seal a little bit because it's a high-density foam. That's what you want, a high-density foam. I guess too high density would be like cement, like what they use around post and all. But look at that, you see? Look at the diameter of the arrow, right? You see it? It's, it's self-sealing a little bit. Okay, <clears throat> so now... What I could do is, you could do is, if you want, um, those these targets you could paint with regular old. You go to Home Depot, your local hardware, you get some latex paint and have match whatever color you want, okay? And you paint them. But this ugly sucker is going to stay like that to the spring so I can see how it works out. You know, if it lasts, maybe I won't rebuild it because that's a new insert. If it lasts to the, you know, if it lasts, you know, I'm going to take a few shots with it. If it lasts, maybe I'll just paint it and leave it. Get another year or two out of it. And that was for $8 can instead of like $17 for the two mix. You know, the two-part mix, which is very good. That Flex at 17 is awesome, okay? So I'm going to pour it. I'm going to shut it off now. And uh, we'll go back and do some shots. But getting back to taking your wife's kitchen knife, she knows I do all this crazy stuff. Matter of fact, uh, you know, you see my videos, I shoot in the house, and I'm telling you, nobody should shoot with anybody forward of the targets. But my wife's away, she's sitting in the living room, I say, listen, you got to get up and move, I want to take two shots, just, you know, because I did something to the arrow knock or whatever. She says, go ahead, you ain't going to miss. And I, okay, so I take a shot or two, so she knows what I, the stuff I do, but I can't get her to put an apple on her head. I tell her, listen, why not? I'm steady as a rock. But she won't go for it. Go figure, right? But seriously, anybody watching this video, I'm joking around. You never shoot with anybody in front of you. You never knock an arrow with anybody in front of you. Safety first. God forbid you have somebody in front of you and you shoot them and kill them. You've got to live with that for the rest of your life. And you've got to live with that for the rest of your life, probably in prison. Okay, so be smart, all right? It's one thing to joke around, but you never take safety for granted, all right? I'm gonna go back, you can watch me shoot, we'll take some shots. Okay, um, the Flex at 17 I was talking about, I forget what price I said it goes for, but uh, you know, there's smaller sample sizes and a little bigger one for like 50 bucks, uh, maybe a little more than 50, and uh, to fill the whole core area with that, is um, it took me 
actually two. I had a big area. It took me two $50 mixes. So it was like $100. Okay, but I got to tell you, it's worth it. It outlasts the cores. It outlasts the targets. It's uh, really good. That Flexus 17 is awesome stuff. Just wanted to correct the price as we move on through the video. All right? Thank you. Okay, just want to talk about my tab a little bit here. Um, I can't shoot a flat tab because it's too close to my face and the string hits my nose. But this Yoast tab is a great tab because it has metal plate and that eighth inch or whatever it is plate builds it out enough so it keeps my hand close to my face. And as I release, I keep, actually the tab keeps my hand away from my face enough that as I release, the string will release away from my nose. If it was closer, it wouldn't release as soon and it would release and hit my nose. So if the further away is, look at this here, it'll roll off before it hits your nose. Okay, <clears throat> you gotta trim your tabs. Okay, this is a three under tab. Um, you want it so when you trim it, you see how it's a weird shape here? You know, okay. It's a weird shape. You want to trim it so when it's all the way back and snug and you're comfortable with it, the small part goes on top, the bottom goes in your palm. You want to be able to, when you're back, feel the tip of your finger. You'll feel the tip of your finger and a little bit of the pad in the corner of your mouth. If you go decide to shoot middle finger, you want to do the same thing. You want to have it so you could shoot either way, trim it enough. Now, you know, once you trim it, you if you you can't we put back what you cut so you draw a pencil line right draw a pencil line like this cut it it'll be bigger and then make little tiny incisions you know two little tiny cuts to shape it but the top edge okay the top edge here is square don't go down on the an angle don't go down on the an angle just leave the top edge square and then come down and then as you curl your fingers, <clears throat> you know, it'll go around so you can touch the top or the middle finger, right? And then again, for string walking, there's calibrations here, all right? And what you do is, I'll show you in a second here. Okay, we're at the 20 yard mark here. And what we're gonna do at 20 yards, I'm gonna go down three quarters. Now these may not be a quarter, <clears throat> you know, looks like eight quarter inch increments. It may not be a quarter, but I'm, I'm just saying to myself, I'm using, I'm gonna say these are three quarters. Put my nail there, can you see my nail? Slide the tab down, and I'm going top finger to the corner of my mouth, okay? You go to 20 mark. Okay, that was a little low. I dropped my arm first shot, which is good. You know why? Because it went right in that hole. All right? That's the first shot of the day. <laughs> so anyway, let's do another one. We'll go down three quarters. And you say to yourself when you go to shoot in line, on a shooting line, or you're going to shoot a deer, or whatever you're going to do, <clears throat> I tell everybody to do this, and I didn't do it today. <laughs> to myself, but be a shooting machine. You ever see a shooting machine? <clears throat> okay, the shooting machine does the same thing. If there's any errors, it's maybe the arrow, okay? So that's what you have to be, the shooting machine, okay? No pluck, no peeking, which is dropping your, you know, no plucking away from your face, no dropping your arm, all right? And I drop my arm, so here we go. Okay, see, keep my hand against my face because I use a static release. Keep my bow arm up on target. Let's go check out that repair job. <clears throat> okay. I know it's supposed to be about using that quick foam on this uh, video, but I always try to just include a little teaching reminder. Be a shooting machine. That's kind of my motto there. Be a shooting machine. 
Okay, let's see. Okay, this is pretty good here. <clears throat> Again, I don't know if this foam is really dense enough to do a whole big area, all right? But it seems to work for repairs. Let's see if this pulls out. I put Vaseline around this. Wow, holds it together. Holds it together. So I would think before you did a whole target repair, I would say waste eight bucks, get a little box, fill it up with foam. You know, a little box, fill it up with foam. And maybe use that box like a miniature block target. You know, rather waste eight bucks. And you got, and then if it works out that you know it shoots, it holds the arrows, it don't go through, it pulls out, it heals. That little box, you have a neat little target to whip around the yard and try and shoot on the ground. Okay. But for my purposes, that's strong enough. It'll keep the target from splitting on me until I can do a major repair. I pulled on the arrow that the insert don't come out no more. So it's a beautiful thing. All right. So get out and shoot. Practice good form. If you have a bad shot and you don't know what you do, I got my iPhone here. Buy one of these $17 stands like I got. Videotape yourself shooting. Okay. Make sure when you release, if you release with static, your hand remains against your face. If you release with back tension, okay, which back tension is a 30 degree drop of your elbow as you squeeze back as you do this, okay, make sure that your hand stays against your face. Pressure. If you watch the Olympic yarches when they shoot, they go along their jawbone. You will watch as they release that their face ripples as they do back tension it goes back all right and the other thing a lot of people don't mention and we have different views there's different techniques of drawing okay there's like <clears throat> seven steps to drawing and anchoring and releasing but come on we're you know for the 3d and for the hunting we get there a little quicker but so my method is either you if you target shooting like 3d come up at 11 o'clock right just don't overextend your arm. Just put it up there and pull, pull, pull all the way back to anchor and swing around. Okay. And you'll feel bone, 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 bone. And then I keep it loose. But when I get to the target, I hold it firm right there. That's just my thing. Okay. If you're going to have a loose grip, put a finger sling on so the bow floats. So there's no hand movement. Okay. So I hold it firm right on there. And when I release, I want my hand to be there. If you use a finger sling... Okay, you pull back, bone, 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 come around. Okay, when you release, your hand should be up and on target and let the bow jump and flop and do whatever it wants. Okay, a couple things. I'm sorry, I can't help myself. It's, uh, you know, the, all these years of archery, I have to throw a little extra in, you know what I mean? Because there might be somebody watching and they're not hitting the target, they wonder why, you know, and these little things will get them on target, okay? <clears throat> the other thing is, too, is if you're hunting and you just come up, just come up, I draw, I come up, touch anchor, okay? And when I'm hunting, I do not use uh, string walking. I use gap shooting. So close as the bottom of the deer, and it arrow rises. At some point, you're going to be point on. You put the point right on the lungs, right? Not for the heart, for the lungs. you got a big area. If you pop the lungs, it can't breathe, it can't run. It'll run a short distance. So anyway, well, all right. And uh, for like 25 yards, the top of the back, maybe. It's different for everybody. Okay, so there's different techniques, different things. Nobody's wrong, okay? Um, whatever works for you. I have guys come over my house. I have a, a couple of guys I've known for years. And they can't help when they shoot, they do this. But they're so consistent and you can't change them. That whatever works for them, man, it works. They're excellent shooters. They drop their arm, but it's only that four inches or whatever it is, and they're on the money, All right? Can't change that, you know, on older guy. 
one more thing <laughs> i don't want to bore you but one more thing is i see guys when they shoot they come back and their elbows out see the elbows out like this here look see i call it the chicken wing okay this elbow has to be all the way back when you're at anchor if somebody pushed on it your whole body would turn okay do not have the chicken wing all right pull all the way back all right watch my other videos on bareboat joe there's a lot of them like i say in all my videos you do whatever works for you you do whatever works for you to achieve good form accurate shooting okay even if it's not what the mainstream does if it really works for you that's what you got to do okay all right watch my other videos bear bow joe all right have a good day get out shooting